Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by dominant and recessive alleles. You should then be able to describe what's meant by homozygous, heterozygous, genotype and phenotype. Now this video does contain a lot of definitions and it's really important that you learn them. I would suggest that you watch this video several times until you're happy with the ideas. In previous videos we've seen that DNA is found in chromosomes and I'm showing you here a human chromosome. Remember that normal human cells contain 23 pairs of chromosomes. So that means that normal human cells contain two copies of every chromosome. And I'm showing you that here. Now a key fact that you need to learn is that one chromosome in the pair comes from your father and the other chromosome comes from your mother. We also saw that genes are sections of DNA on a chromosome. And again, because chromosomes come in pairs, we've got two copies of every gene. I'm showing you here the gene which controls earwax. We're looking at the earwax gene because earwax is controlled by a single gene. Most characteristics are controlled by many genes acting together. Now genes often come in different versions, and scientists call these alleles. So alleles are versions of a gene, and that's a key definition that you need to learn. The gene for earwax has two alleles. One allele leads to wet earwax, and we're going to give this allele the symbol capital E. The other allele leads to dry earwax, and we're going to give this allele the symbol lowercase e. As we said before, we've got two copies of every gene. So imagine that a person has two copies of the allele for dry earwax. I'm showing that here. The genotype of a person tells us the alleles present. And again, that's a definition you need to learn. So this person's genotype is lowercase e, lowercase e. Because this person has two copies of the same allele, scientists say they are homozygous. Okay, now the phenotype of a person tells us the characteristics caused by the person's alleles. So because this person has two alleles for dry earwax, their phenotype is dry earwax. Okay, this person has two alleles for wet earwax, so their genotype is capital E, capital E. And again, because both alleles are the same, they're homozygous. So because this person has two alleles for wet earwax, their phenotype is wet earwax. Okay, here's a third person. Their genotype is capital E, lowercase e. In other words, they've got one allele for wet earwax and one allele for dry earwax. Now in this case, the person has two different alleles. Scientists call two different alleles heterozygous. So this person is heterozygous for the earwax alleles. So what phenotype will this person have? Well, in the case of earwax, the allele for wet earwax is dominant to the allele for dry earwax. A dominant allele will show in the phenotype, even if there's only one copy present. So in this case, because the allele for wet earwax is dominant, this person's phenotype is wet earwax. The allele for dry earwax is recessive. A recessive allele will only show in the phenotype if two copies are present. In other words, if no dominant allele is present. As we saw before, this person has two copies of the allele for dry earwax. So because there's no dominant allele present, their phenotype is dry earwax. Now, as we said at the start, some characteristics are controlled by a single gene. However, most characteristics are the result of many genes acting together, for example, height. In the next video, we're going to look at genetic crosses and see how alleles are inherited. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.